Hi, I'm Todd Rosenbluth, Head of Research at Vetify, and thanks for joining us for another episode of ETF 360. This time I'm joined by Matt Cole of Strive Asset Management, and we're here to talk about the Strive U.S. Energy ETF Drill, D-R-L-L. Matt, thanks for joining me. Hey, Todd. Happy to be here. Well, glad to have you. So let's talk about energy investing. It's been the energy equity sector has been the best performer in 2022. What do you think has been driving that? Well, first, it's profitability. So energy companies have become massively profitable over the past year. Just as a quick example for you, in the most recent quarter, Exxon was actually more profitable from Google. If you rewind just a year ago, that was not the case at all. Secondarily, fundamental factors that were headwinds for the energy sector and tailwinds for the tech sector for the last several years, 2009 to 2021, have all reversed, such as monetary policy, fiscal stimulus, historically low interest rates, and sustained low inflation. This has caused a shift in investor mindsets to put a premium on current profits than potential profits in the future, which is typically more common in growth sectors like the tech sector. So let's talk about 2023. We're heading into it. Why do you think investors should be having more exposure to energy than they do today? Well, we're very bullish on the U.S. energy sector. We see potential for an increase still two to three times relative to the tech sector over the next several years. So secular trends in outperformance or underperformance between the energy sector and the tech sector have typically been about 10-year trades. So while it's true that energy has outperformed tech pretty substantially in 2022, we really view this as the first inning of a five to 10-year secular trend in favor of U.S. energy. Why? Well, most importantly, because energy stocks still look extremely cheap on an earnings-adjusted basis. If you look from June of 2018 through currently in 2022, the U.S. energy sector earnings are up over 170%, while the stock price as of 2Q earnings were only up 7%. If you compare that to the tech sector, you had the stock prices up over 100% for the sector, with earnings up only around 70%. Secondarily, we expect that oil supply shortages will last for several years. It's true that oil has come down pretty substantially from its June highs, But it's important to remember that it's still higher than it was basically from 2014 all the way through 2021. Additionally, there's some pretty important short-term factors that have been constraining the price of oil. First, the Biden administration has been draining the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It's currently at the lowest levels it's been through at least the 1980s, and they have commitments to continue draining at least through the election season. Secondarily, you have China still on lockdown from COVID. The reversal of one or both of those factors are future tailwinds to support the price of oil. At least call it in the $80 range, which is where it currently is. And that's really all that you need for oil and gas companies to be very profitable. But there's potential for oil to even go up more than that, which would be even a further accelerant on a bull case for U.S. energy. So let's talk about your ETF, DRLL, or or drill. What makes it different than some of the other U.S. energy ETFs that are out there? Strives advocacy through our vote and our voice. We believe that corporate governance materially impacts the future direction of corporation, and your asset manager's corporate governance strategy is a critical factor when you select an ETF. So over the last several years, passive ETFs have become pretty commoditized products with risk and return effectively the same across products. In that regard, drill is no different. And and in the past several years, investors were typically just choosing the lowest fee product. That was probably the right decision for the past decade, as there was really no significant difference among asset managers' corporate governance policy. But that's led us to where we are today, with a unified vote and a unified voice pushing stakeholder capitalism and ESG mandates into corporate America. For what we believe a majority of U.S. investors do not agree with, we represent an alternative. We believe that the U.S. energy sector has been the most negatively impacted by the, U- by the ESG movement and a mandate to energy corporate corporations to drill more and frack more if, and only if it makes sense for the long-term performance of the companies, is a mandate that the sector really needs. 
So let's just talk about how you're interacting with companies since since Strel has been around. What has the engagement been? So our, our engagements have gone really well. Last month, we had our first public engagement with Chevron, and Chevron responded pretty much instantaneously, positively, both publicly and privately. We've had several other conversations with the oil and gas industry, and they've all gone very well as well. We view that the U.S. energy sector provides critical services to America, that they are very important for the human flourishing movement, and they view themselves as that, and they want to be liberated from the ESG constraints to be able to drill more and frack more if it makes sense for the long-term returns, and right now we think it does. Well, thanks, Matt. That was great. I really enjoyed the conversation. Hope people learn more about this ETF by visiting ETFtrends.com. Have a great day. Thanks, Todd.